channel i crochet cute things and today i'm going to be revisiting one of my most popular designs the emma book cover and using the base pattern to create a tulip book cover as well as a tulip book sleeve if you've been following me for a while you know that i'm an avid reader i love fantasy i love romance i read a lot of contemporary fiction as well i'm just a reader at heart so when i saw this really beautiful gorgeous stunning necklace from Le petite sprout i just i was just speechless so here it is when i received these i was i had the biggest smile on my face for so long while unboxing the necklaces necklaces i've got so many to show you i was i was speechless my sister was with me every time we opened a necklace we were just like <gasps> every single necklace was even better than the other one the quality is amazing everything's amazing they're breathtaking they're st stunning let me just show you already i put them in my little crochet cake jewelry box i'm gonna show you all of them all right there is chai he was there with me for the unboxing as well and look at that isn't that so beautiful and the book opens as well this is the delicate point of view necklace oh my goodness why is the camera not focusing look at that it is breathtaking this is the you drew stars around my scars inspired by cardigan of course and then we've got another one of my personal favorites the strong enough necklace oh and this is the all the love necklace in harry's handwriting this one got sent for my sister. She has found her obsession of Harry Styles and she absolutely loves this. She wears this to school every day. It's a locket, it opens. Chai seems to like this one too. Do you wanna try it on? <laughs> I've put the link to her shop in the description box. I highly recommend her pieces. She's got some amazing jewelry and they're really good quality as well. And there are a lot of beautiful, gorgeous, breathtaking designs on her shop as well. I'm going to show you two versions of the tulip stitch, one with single crochet and one with double crochet that works in a round. You can use the double crochet stitches that work in a round to make a sleeve for a book or make it larger for your laptop or iPad. Remember, this is completely customizable so you can control how big or small your piece is. You can also follow any one of my other bag tutorials and add a strap on top of the sleeve to turn it into a bag. You can use the single crochet version to make the book cover or you can make panels so you can make two pieces of just tulip stitch crochets and then you can slip stitch the sides together. You can join them using any one of my other tutorials or you can use my sleeve tutorial. You can join all the sides together and you can turn it into a cushion by adding stuffing inside. Remember not to skip my explanations because that's how I show you how to make anything you want and make modifications, make customizations to make the size what you want it to be. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. You can use any hook size, any yarn size because the size is completely customizable. It doesn't wholly depend on the size of hook or yarn you're using. We're going to get started by making a slip knot. So for the beginners out there, you can make a slip knot in many different ways. Here's how I like to make it. I wrap it around my fingers and I use my hook to pull it through and I tighten and there you'll have your slip knot. Now you're going to chain the length that you need. That's the width of your book. So this is the height and this is the width. We need to chain a length that is the width of our book. So to chain, hold on to your slip knot, grab your yarn and twist. And you're going to chain in multiples of three. So a multiple of three would be what's in the multiplication table. So for example, three times two is six. So six is a multiple of three. Three times three is nine. So nine is a multiple of three. So you're going to chain in multiples of three plus two extra chains. So I've chained 12, which is a multiple of three. Now I'm going to chain two more. So that way I'll have a multiple of three plus two. So one, two and now my chain is going to be slightly smaller than the width of my book and remember you don't want this to be too long because your chains are going to stretch out for our next two rows we're going to do single crochets to single crochet you're going to skip this first chain that's next to your hook and skip this first chain and you're going to insert your hook into the second chain from your hook right over there then you're going to yarn over pull up a loop 
and then yarn over and pull through both the loops on your hook and that is your single crochet. Now you're going to insert a single crochet into all of your chains. This is what your end of the row should look like. Remember, you should have left a bit of space on the sides of your book cover. Now we're going to do our second row. So to start your row, you are going to chain one. This is your turning chain and it doesn't count as a stitch. Then you're going to turn your work to the other side and you're going to insert your hook into the very first stitch. So that's your chain one and this is your first stitch of the round. So get your hook, insert it into the stitch I'm just turning it this way so you can see what I'm doing and then you're going to single crochet. Now go ahead and insert one single crochet into all of the stitches in this row. Once you're done with that you are going to be inserting a single crochet into your last stitch but you're also going to be changing colors to green. So here's how to change colors. Follow these same steps every time you want to change colors. You're going to go into your last stitch of the row of your row and you're going to do your regular single crochet but you're not going to complete it instead you're going to complete it with the color that you want to attach so I'm going to be attaching green you're going to get the color that you want to use make a little loop with it and you're going to slide it through those two loops completing the single crochet like that and now we're going to be working with the green make green your working yarn and you can tighten the white for our third row we are going to start off by chaining four one two three and four then you're going to turn your work and you're going to double crochet into the very first stitch over here so yarn over insert your hook into that stitch pull up a loop then yarn over pull through two loops and then yarn over, pull through the other two loops on your hook, and that is how you double crochet. Here's how to tie off the white yarn that you have. I'm just going to cut it, and then using these two ends, I'm going to just make a little knot to secure them in place, like that. We're going to be repeating the following pattern for the rest of the row. You're going to skip two stitches and insert a double crochet into the third stitch. So one, two, skip. And in the third stitch, insert a double crochet. Then you're going to chain two and insert a double crochet into the same stitch. And now you're going to repeat this till the end of the row. So you're going to skip two, insert a double crochet into the third stitch, chain two, and then you're going to insert a double crochet in the same stitch. Now do this until the end of the row. Now in the last stitch we're going to repeat the same thing again. So skip two and in the third, which is your last stitch, you're going to insert a double crochet, chain two, and another double crochet in that same stitch. But do not complete the double crochet because this is where we switch colors. So after doing your first pull through two loops and you have two loops left on your hook, you're going to switch colors. And remember the yarns that I'm using are linked on my Amazon storefront and the link is in the description box. You're going to pull this color through to complete the double crochet. Repeat these same steps anytime you want to change colors. Now we're going to chain two, one, two, and you're going to turn your work. Now we're going to be inserting double crochet clusters in all of our chain spaces. So this is a chain space right over there. Not this one, the one at the top over here, that's a chain space. And so to make a double crochet cluster, you're going to yarn over insert your hook into the chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then once again, yarn over, insert your hook into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And you're going to do this until you've got six loops on your hook. So just go ahead, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, Keep counting the loops. Right now I've got five, so I've got to do this one more time. And there you go. Once you've got six loops on your hook, one, two, three, four, five, six, you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And that's extremely satisfying. And there you have your first little tulip flower. Then you're going to chain two. And you're going to repeat this all into the next chain space. So yarn over, insert your hook. 
you're basically doing a half completed double crochet five times until you've got six loops on your hook. So look, I'm doing my third. So one double crochet, second, third, four, and five. And then count the loops on your hook when you've got six like I do. You're going to yarn over and pull through all six of them. Then you're going to chain two. And you're going to repeat this in all of the chain spaces. Now I'm about to do my last tulip cluster stitch over here in that last chain space. And I'm just going to show you what to do a bit differently to end this round. So keep watching. Alright, so I'm about to end this cluster stitch. Again, I did five half completed double crochets until I've got six loops on my hook. Now, you're not going to yarn over and pull through with the pink, you're going to yarn over and pull through with the white again, so we're switching colors. Now, we're going to work with the white and we're going to do our row of single crochet stitches again. So, you're going to chain one to start the round. We can fasten this off later. You're going to turn your work and now you're going to repeat this pattern for the round. In the stitch that's on top of your tulip, so right this one, you are going to insert one single crochet and then in the place where you have your chain twos with the pink, so another chain space, you're going to insert two single crochets and you're going to repeat this for the row. So again, when you reach your pink tulip on the top stitch, look, there's a stitch at the top over there, you're going to do one single crochet. And then in your chain space over here, you're going to do two single crochets. Alright, now we're going to do our next round, and then after this, you're basically just going to repeat everything that I've shown you. So for the next round, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then insert a single crochet. So ignore the chain, insert a single crochet into all of the stitches. Just one single crochet into all of the stitches. And then you're just going to repeat what you did for the leaves, you're going to repeat what you did for the pink petals or whatever color you're using, and then you're going to repeat what I showed you for the white. You can replay the video or you can go to the written pattern linked in the description box if you don't want to have to keep referring back to the video, you can just keep it open for reference. After I finish this row, I'm going to do the same steps for the green, then the same steps for the pink. I'm going to keep doing it until this is the size that I want for my book. This is what my finished book cover looks like. I've got a lot of ends to weave in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck them in when I'm doing the border around it. To start it from the right hand corner right here at the bottom, insert your hook through that stitch at the end and get the yarn that you want to make the border with, make a little loop with it and slide it through. Then tie it into a knot to secure it in place. Insert your hook back through that stitch, pull up a loop, and chain one. Work over your ends as you're single crocheting along the border. So to do this, starting from that same place where you attach your yarn, you're going to insert your hook and you're going to single crochet. Then you're going to single crochet in every stitch all the way around your book cover. As you're going, make your ends on this side and work over them. Once you're done with one side, you're going to be working along the other side. So same thing, you're just going to be working over, insert your hook into the edge, and single crochet. Make sure you're inserting your hook near the edge of the stitches. There's no clear stitch here. Just insert your hook wherever you see that it's the edge of your work, and just single crochet like normal. So over here, I don't really have a stitch to go through, so I'm just going to go over the green and single crochet. So it's all about approximation. There's no clear thing to go over here or to go into. You're going to start to see your border form. You can over here, for example, in the clusters, you can just insert your hook through any one of the double crochet stitches that you have. I'm going to try to fit my hook over here, and then I'm just going to single crochet over it. And then over here, just in that white space, once you're done, that's what you'll have so far. Now we're going to be working along this edge and the steps remain the exact same. You're just going to insert your hook into the stitches, do a single crochet, and then go ahead and insert a single crochet through every stitch. It's going to be much easier in this part because you've got clear stitches where you can insert your hook. I'm almost done working on the other side as well. 
just exactly the same steps keep single crocheting all the way around now for the next part we are going to be working on making rows that will cover the spine of our book back and forth and back and forth until it covers your book's spine my edge a little bit more neat i'm just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that i made just to join it all together then i'm going to turn my work and i'm going to insert a single crochet into that stitch and now I'm going to continue inserting a single crochet all the way back down. And this is going to be my first row for the book spine. So now I'm at the end of this row and I'm going to start my next row. Remember, you're not going to go all the way around. You're only going to be going back and forth over here to build a book spine. I'm not going to chain one to start a new row because I want cleaner edges. I'm just going to turn my work and insert a single crochet into that first stitch over there. And then I'm just going to insert a single crochet into every stitch down the row. And you're going to repeat this step to keep making rows until this is as big as your book spine. Once you're done, this is what you should have. Next, we're going to do rows of double crochet to make the back of the book. And you're going to keep doing rows until it covers this whole thing. To double crochet, you're going to turn your work, yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two, and that is going to be your first double crochet. Then go ahead and insert a double crochet into every stitch, and every time you wanna start a new row, you're going to turn your work, insert a double crochet into the first stitch, and then insert one double crochet in every stitch. Over here, I'm going to start a new row, so I'm just gonna turn, insert a double crochet into that first stitch, and then insert one double crochet in every stitch. When you're done and the back piece fits over the back of your book, you're going to fasten off, and then we're going to do the little chains in the corner to hold our cover in place. To fasten off, you can just chain two, cut and pull, and tighten. The steps that I'm gonna show you now, you're going to repeat them on all four corners. Make sure you're doing this on the back side of the cover, not the front side. You're going to insert your hook through the edge and you're going to attach your yarn with a knot and then you're going to pull up a loop and chain three or four once you've got that chain you're going to slip stitch it back over here on the other side And now you'll have a little chain that can clasp onto your book's cover. So I'm just going to show you how this is going to work really quickly. For example, this is your book's end. You're just going to slide it through like this, and that's how the book is going to stay on your cover. You have this chain clasp on all the corners and that your cover can stay on your book. To end your work, you can just fasten off. So chain two, cut, pull, and tighten. And there you go, this is what it should look like. Once you're done, you're gonna have a clasp on each corner and you can slide your book on now. So you just push your book through the little clasps like this. You have to make sure they're tight. So if they're not tight enough, that means you have to chain less. And you do it on one side, then you repeat it on the other side. Now we're going to get started and make a sleeve. Remember, the length that you make your chain determines how big your piece is going to be. So if you're making something for your laptop or iPad, make it bigger. If you're making an AirPod case, make it smaller. If you're making a book sleeve, make it the size of your book. You're going to get started by making a slip knot. There are many different ways to do it. Here's how I like to do it. And then you're going to chain in multiples of three. A multiple of three is basically what's in the multiplication table. So for example, three times two is six. So six is a multiple of three, or three times four is 12. So 12 is a multiple of three. Just make sure that the total number of chains that you have, that number is a multiple of three. So I've got my book here and I did a total of 33 chains and this is how long it is compared to my book. 33 is a multiple of three because three times 11 is 33. There is a bit of math in crochet and if you haven't, if you're not used to using math in your crochet projects, I just wanna make sure it's super clear what I'm doing. But we're going to start with our first round. What we're gonna do is we're going to skip the first two chains and insert a double crochet into that third chain over there. 
So to double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now I want you to get a bobby pin or if you have a stitch marker, use a stitch marker. I'm going to place it into that very, so okay, so you've got your double crochet stitch, then you've got one chain, and then you've got another chain. You're going to put your bobby pin in that chain over there. So basically the third chain from your hook, so once again you've got your one, two, and in that third one you're going to put that bobby pin just to mark it. I'm going to show you why later. But now you're going to go ahead and insert a double crochet into all of the chains down the row. So since I did 33 chains, I'm just going to give you an example. Since I did 33 chains, I should have a total of 31 stitches in total. So I should, should have done 31 double crochets because we skipped the two chains. So 33 minus two is 31. So I should, do, I should do 31 double crochets. So starting from that very first double crochet that you did till your double crochet in that last chain. So here we go, I've got 31 double crochets. Remember that's your, these two are your chains and starting from here is your double crochet and till the last one over here. Now we are going to be inserting two more double crochets in this last chain over here. So in that same place, you're gonna insert two more double crochets. So that's one and again in that same place that same chain and that is two now you're working like this you're gonna turn it basically like that upside down so that your stitches are down here and these are your chains again now we're gonna be working in these chains you already worked into this last one over here so now we're gonna start over here and you're gonna insert one double crochet into the backs of the chains as well and this is what will help us work in round so what I'm doing is I'm just inserting one double crochet into the backs of the chains as well. I'm just going to show you more clearly. So that's your double crochet that you did. And this is the back of the chain. So I'm going to yarn over and insert another double crochet just in the back of the chain. I've worked all along this edge and over here I'm going to be doing my last double crochet. and you're going to insert another double crochet so where you've got your last double crochet you're going to insert one more double crochet so now in this very last chain you've basically got three double crochets one two and then that very first double cr crochet you did is your first now you're going to count so remember that this is your chain and this is your chain right those are your two chains that we skipped so starting from here, I want you to count how many double crochets you have all the way back over here. If the number of double crochet stitches that you have is a multiple of three plus one, then you're on the right track. So for example, I have a total of 64 stitches. 63 is a multiple of one, and then plus one equals 64. Since I've got 64 double crochets, I'm on the right track. Total number of double crochet stitches is not a multiple of 3 plus 1. What you can do is you can add another double crochet into this last chain over here. Now we're going to start the next round, which is going to be for green. You're going to repeat these steps every time you want to start a new round. So you've got your 1, your chain 1, and then you've got your chain 2. So this is why we needed the bobby pin. You're going to skip this chain and then you're going to go into that chain two. So take your hook and insert it into that second chain like that and then you're going to slip stitch like that. And then to start the next round you're going to chain two, one, two. Now remember this is a slip stitch over here. This does not count as your actual stitch so don't go into it when you're doing your next round. Our next round is going to be just white, so you're going to insert a double crochet into every stitch. So starting from your first stitch over here, you're going to insert one double crochet in every stitch. Remember, at the end of this round, you should have a total of 64 double crochets. So you can keep count as you're going to make sure that you're on the right track. 
Also, if it helps, you can mark your chain two with your bobby pin or stitch marker so you don't lose it. So that was my chain one, chain two. You can just mark it with a bobby pin or stitch marker so that you know where it is when you come back around. And that's it. Just go ahead and do one double crochet in every stitch. As you're going around, please make sure that you don't accidentally insert more than one double crochet in every stitch. So make sure you're careful with how many double crochets you're inserting. Make sure it's just one. Please remember to not accidentally skip any stitches because if you do, then you won't have the correct stitch count to make the leaves and the flower. So this is what you should have once you're done and then you can just fold it in half to get that book sleeve shape. All right, now I just wanna point this out to you. So this is your last double crochet because, so I've got my stitch here. So this is your chain two, that's your chain one, and this is your slip stitch. These three over here are not your stitches, so don't insert a double crochet into them. At the end, starting from your first double crochet till this last one over here, you should have the same number that you did in the previous round. Now we're going to end the round, so you're gonna remove your bobby pin and you're gonna slip stitch into that chain to where your bobby pin was. But you're not gonna slip stitch with the white, you're gonna get your green now and we're going to make the round for the green. And the steps are going to be the exact same every time you want to do the green leaves. So you're going to make a little loop and you're going to slide this through like that, attaching your green yarn to your work. And then you're going to get started by chaining four. One, two, three, and four. Now this was where your chain was. And this is your first double crochet right over there. So you're going to go ahead and insert a double crochet in that stitch. Like that. And now you're going to repeat the following pattern all the way around. So the pattern is going to be skip two. So remember, you've already got your stitch there. This one doesn't count. Starting from here, you're gonna skip one, skip two, and in that third stitch, you're going to insert a double crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then you're going to chain two, one, two. And then in that same stitch, you're going to insert another double crochet. And now repeat this all the way around. So skip two, one, two. In that third stitch, insert a double crochet. Chain two, one, two. And in that same stitch, insert another double crochet. And there you go. Repeat this all the way around. So to end your work, the white that you left over here, you can cut it and then you can tie a knot. Do this every time you stop using a color. So just cut it and tie a knot with that previous color that you attached. I'm just going to double knot it to make it extra secure. And then continue like normal. So that is your slip stitch. And you've got three stitches left here at the end. That's how you know you're on the right track. So you're gonna repeat the same step. You're gonna skip two, go into that third stitch, and chain two. Oops, sorry. And insert a double crochet into that same stitch, repeating the same steps we've been doing. And that should be the end of this round. Now you've got your, well, you've got your chain four over here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into it and now we're going to bring in the pink. Whatever color you wanna use for the petal and make a little loop with it like this. And you're gonna slide it through like that. And then you can just tighten a little bit. Now you're going to chain two. One, two. And now we're gonna be doing double crochet clusters. So a double crochet cluster is just a half completed double crochet that you do as many times as you want until your cluster is as big as you want. Basically, to make a cluster, you're gonna yarn over and insert your hook into the chain space. This is a chain space, not this one over here. The one where you can see two chains and then a big hole, that's a chain space. So in your chain space, you're gonna insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two. Then you should have two loops on your hook and you're not gonna complete your double crochet. Instead, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the chain space again, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So right now we've done two double crochets. 
Again, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now you've done three double crochets. Then yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now you've done four double crochets. To check if you're on the right track, you can count the loops on your hook. If you've got five loops on your hook, you're on the right track. And then you can yarn over and pull through all five loops like this. Then you're going to chain two and repeat these same steps into the next chain space over here. Remember, this is not a chain space. This is. All right, so I've worked all the way around. I actually decided to do just three double crochets instead of four. I didn't like how chunky it was. So here's how to do three. I'm going to do my last tulip. So you go in. That's one, two, and three. And once you've got four loops on your hook, you yarn over and pull through all four. And once you finish your last tulip, you're not going to chain two. Instead, you're going to go into that chain two that you had over there. And you're not going to complete the slip stitch with the pink. Instead, you're going to go and get white again. And then you're going to make a little loop with it and you're going to pull it through the pink to change colors like that. And now we're going to be working with white. Now the pattern is going to be chain two. And we have to do a total of 64 double crochets with white. So as you're going around, make sure you keep count to make sure that you have 64 or whatever number of stitches that you had in your previous white rounds. Make sure you have that same number when you finish this. Started by inserting a double crochet into the tulip first. So over here, Right there, you're going to do a double crochet, just one, and this is what the pattern is going to be. You're going to do one double crochet that's on top of your tulip, and then in your chain two space over there, you're going to do two double crochets. One, two, and that is the pattern. So in your tulip, at the top of the tulip, you've got your stitch, you're going to do one double crochet, and then in your chain space over here, you're going to do two double crochets. And you're going to repeat this all the way around. So you should have so far. Isn't it so pretty? I'm just going to do my last double crochet with the white into my tulip stitch over here. And that is the end of your next round. Now, if you want, you can continue and do the green leaves now by following the same steps. So you can go back to that part of the video and follow the steps to do the leaves. Or you can make another row of white and then do the leaves. So I'm going to be doing two rows of white. I kind of like how much white there is. Regardless of if you're going to do the leaves next or if you're going to do another round of white, you're going to go into the chain two. So that's your chain one, chain two. Go into it like that. And if you're doing green, then attach your green here. But if you're doing another round of white, then just slip stitch with white. And then start your round by chaining two. If you're doing the white, remember the steps for green are different and you can watch the steps for green in the back part of the video. And now you're gonna be inserting one double crochet in every stitch, starting from that first double crochet over there. If you're doing another round of white, you basically just have to do one double crochet in every stitch all the way around. And once you're done with this round, you basically repeat the same steps that I've showed you. You do the leaves, then you do the pink or whatever color you're doing, tulips, and then you repeat the white. So it's super simple. Remember that you're always going to slip stitch into the chains that you do in the beginning. And remember to keep count so that you don't accidentally miss any of your stitches. Here is my finished tulip book sleeve. I did quite a lot of rows and then I sewed some buttons on for where I want the clasp to be. I'm going to show you how to fasten off your work. So I ended right over here with a little slip stitch. And to fasten off your work, you're just going to chain two and then you're going to cut your yarn off. Also, I turned my work inside out so that all my ends are hidden inside. So look at that, those are all my ends. I just turned my work inside out so they're hidden. You can also leave them in, but I'm quite lazy so I don't like to do that. And now I'm just going to chain two and I'm going to cut. Cool. Now we're going to add the little clasp that are going to go around our button. So get the yarn color that you want to use, make a little loop with it, and we're going to attach it where your button basically lines up. I've put my book inside to see how long I'll need to make it, and I'm going to insert my hook through the stitch where I want to attach my yarn. My yarn, pull it through the stitch, and make a knot to secure it in place. 
Now you're going to insert your hook back through and you can work over this end over here. You're going to chain one and insert a single crochet into the stitches where you want the flap to be. So I'm going to do one single crochet from here till here. So basically five stitches. Back into that stitch where you attach your yarn and do a single crochet there. And then one single crochet into the next stitches until you have the size that you want for the clasp. So I'm just inserting a single crochet through these. And last one. There, now I've got one single crochet in each of these and that is how big I want the flap to be. Now to start a new row, I'm just going to turn my work and I'm going to insert a single crochet into the stitches. The same stitches. I started with five single crochets, so in this row I'm also going to do five single crochets. And I'm going to do another row. So you're going to keep doing rows until the flap can reach your button over here, and then I'm going to show you what to do next. You're going to make a hole for the button to slide through. To do that, you're going to start your row like normal. So I'm going to start a new row over here, and then I'm going to do just one single crochet. And now I'm going to skip the next three stitches to make space for my button. So the number of stitches that you're going to be skipping, like I'm skipping three, you're going to chain that same number. Since I'm skipping three, I'm going to chain three. And then you're going to single crochet back into that last single crochet that you have. And this is going to create a little hole for your button to go through right over there. So when you put it on, you can slide your button through this. And that's going to attach your clasp like that. And then once you're done, you're going to do your next row. So just turn your work around and continue like normal. You're going to insert a single crochet into that first stitch and then where you have your chains you're going to insert that same number of stitches so i've got three chains so i'm going to do three single crochets over there so one two and three and then i've got my last single crochet in that last stitch over there and you can end your clasp here or you can do one more row to make it extra long to get the look that you want it to be and then you can just slide it on you can see what it looks like on your button and then you can end your work you can fasten it off by chaining two and pulling just like we've been doing for the other steps then you're going to repeat what you did here on the other side as well for the airpod case i followed the same steps for the sleeves i started off with chaining nine plus three extra chains and then i repeated the same steps so in total over here i had 22 stitches and i repeated the same steps over and over again once I was done making the white border using the one double crochet, two double crochet pattern, what I'm doing now is I'm just slip stitching all around my case. So to slip stitch, you insert your hook through the stitches and then you yarn over and you pull through the loops like that. And that is a slip stitch. I'm making these super duper tight. What this is doing is it's creating a really nice neat border around my AirPod case and also pulling the stitches in a little bit tighter so that my case isn't too loose at the top. As you can see, what it's done is it's made this a little bit smaller and tighter so that it's harder to get my AirPod case off. So I don't have to be worried about it falling off or anything because it's extra secure now. Now we're going to make the little chain that's going to make it kind of like a basket bag and you can attach it to your bag this way. So I've got my slip stitch over here. You're gonna start chaining the length that you need. So I'm gonna do a pretty long chain. So I've done 40 chains and now I'm going to show you how to end this. So you're just going to take your chains and you're going to find a place to go through that's opposite over here to give it sort of like that back shape and then you're going to insert your hook and you're going to slip stitch like that. And then you can fasten off. So to fasten off I'm just going to, hold on, I'm just going to chain two. I'm going to get my scissor and I'm going to cut pull and tighten and that is how you're going to finish up your little bag like airpod case i wrap it around and then i push this through and there you've got your little bag airpod case